Hey, it's Lauren. Today I, uh, like a million, a million and one other people on the internet, I have a Fenty beauty review. I got really overly excited and bought way more stuff without doing my research. So I have done the trial and error research. So I will have all of my thoughts and opinions on these products. I have been using them for well over a week, almost two weeks at this point. So this is not a first impressions review. Um, this is I have used a lot of these a lot, so if you want an in-depth review, um, please keep watching and you'll see how I uh, get this sort of crazy glowy face from putting a bunch of these products on my face. Oh, and uh, the subscribe, that would be great. All right, uh, to the stuff. So I'm gonna start out with the Pro Filter Instant Retouch Primer. This is a mattifying sort of pore filling primer, but yet it actually is quite creamy in its texture. I would say if anything, I have found it comparable to the Touch and Soul No Poreblum Primer. Uh, this is like a mattifying pore filling, but slightly hydrating primer. So they're kind of similar in that sense. This is a dimethicone based primer. So that's like the second ingredient, but it does have a lot of glycerin in it as well. So I think that kind of helps with that sort of slightly uh, moisturized feel that it gives to the skin. So I'm gonna take about a pump, maybe a pump and a half, and put it all over my skin. It does have like a light scent, uh, kind of like like a, a little bit like a baby powder scent, but in a good way. I have worn it with a few different foundations at this point, and I like how it looks underneath. I really like how it looks underneath like more hydrating foundations like the It Cosmetics CC Cream. I think it looks really good uh, underneath that. But it also is like, granted I'm like super red right now from like doing a bunch of stuff today, but like on better skin days, I've worn this with um, just like a bunch of concealer and it's really nice. It has that very pore perfecting smoothing quality. So I'm gonna let this um, sink in a little bit more onto my skin before I go in with the foundation. I have combo skin, so I have like some dry patches, I have some acne, I have like some oily areas, so you know, combo skin. But I find with the foundation that you need, a, you need skin prep. You need to have moisturized, beforehand, you know, primer, you need, you need the skin prep, but at the same time, you need to have really let like all that stuff sink in. So if I like went in right now with the primer still like setting, uh, things would break up a little bit faster than they do already on me. So I'm gonna let this set and I will come back and put on the foundation. Okay, so I think things have settled in uh, enough for me to get going with the foundation. I think it goes without saying that the shade range on these guys is pretty incredible. Really sort of like the base in general seems to be the center around this product line. You know, very, very perfected, soft, like red carpet almost looking skin. And sometimes I have achieved that with this foundation. It's been a little bit actually a, a rocky road with this foundation, if you follow me on Instagram, I did a first impressions on uh, the foundation, just all of the products that I picked up on my Instagram stories, and I loved it instantly. It just went on perfectly. It was like this beautiful, velvety finish. And then about every single day since then, it's just kind of like gone down in how it's looked on me. It's been very weird. It's like maybe it is the foundation, uh, this particular one. I did get the little sample of the 150, which the texture of this is much thicker than this one, which is 120. So I did a little investigating and I picked up a couple of samples from Sephora. I got another sample of 120 and I got a sample of 140. And yeah, I think it might be this particular something maybe happened with shipping and heat. I don't know what, but these have performed just fine, great, nice, since uh, I've used them a couple of times, and this still looks weird. 
Um, but even with that, I have had some issues with this foundation in general, which I shall talk about as I put it on my skin. But I just thought that was really strange. I'm not sure what's going on there. And actually after like getting these samples, I think I kind of actually prefer the 140. The 120 is still a pretty good match for me, but the 140, uh, I think blends in even more seamlessly than I think the 120, but I could probably get away with either of them. I have liked using it with this serum airbrush foundation brush from It Cosmetics. I used a sponge, which I kind of found just like broke up a little bit too much on me. And then I used like a regular paddle brush, which was okay. But because this is such a like a serum -y liquid sort of consistency that having this where I can just kind of like press it into the skin as I like slightly buff it in really works because it is such like a cream to powder finish. It really sets on the skin super fast. So also it's one of those things where when I would like dot it onto the face and then work it in, I would have some, some issues with it already kind of setting and then getting dry and a little bit cakey. So uh, like a lot of foundations, it's it's been best to work in sections. So I just start working it on to the skin and I move pretty fast. I use just shy of a pump's worth of foundation. Every time that I have gone in with multiple layers to try and build it up, it then looks even more cakey on my skin. And if I go in with another layer after the first layer has set, it does have a tendency to push the foundation around even more. And I find that to be sort of true with any like cream or uh, liquidy products that I put on top of this foundation that it kind of ends up wiping away and like moving the foundation off my face. Much like um, I will talk about with the matchsticks, how that formulation with this formulation seems to not really jive with my skin type. So to give sort of a comparison, this side I have 140 and this side I put 120 both from the new samples I got from Sephora not from this one which I'm scared of using again but even with that um there is some issues with this foundation on my skin it definitely kind of clings to dryness and if you can see around my nose I just it just doesn't really want to blend I just can't seem to get it to blend. And then it also, um, my lip area is rather textured and it really seems to sort of sit on top of there. Up close, you definitely get a very sort of powdered looking face. Far away, it just, it looks stunning, but up close, it definitely has that sort of powdery finish to it. It's very, very lightweight, which I appreciate. It still hasn't fully set yet, so it's still just like a tiny bit dewy, but when it fully dries down, it pretty much doesn't feel like much is on my face, except till you get till a few hours in, and then it does start to get a, a little bit oily. Okay. Very quickly drew in my brows, because that was bothering me. Not I like them completely, but you know, that will do. Uh, so moving on to the matchsticks, I picked up the Trio in Light. So it comes with two of the matte matchsticks and one of the shimmers. So there's Amber, which is like the contour shade, Linen, which is like a matte highlight concealer shade. And then there's Starstruck, which is like the straight up highlighter. They all have a rather dry formula. So I'll talk about the concealer first, which was is linen. Because it is a drier formula, if I go in straight with the bullet, it ends up looking even more uh, cakey. So I'm going to warm it up and press it underneath my eyes and just sort of blend it in and make sure it's all like warmed up with my fingers. Very similar to like how I like to use the Laura Mercier Secret Camouflage Concealer. Since it is a like thicker, um, like sort of waxy formula, you kind of want to make it a little bit more emollient by warming it up. So I'm also, I have a spot right here. I'm gonna try and cover it. Now I have very textured under eyes and unfortunately it doesn't sit very well on my under eye area. So I don't like it on the under eye. And then on spots as well, I find that it just sort of cakes on top. 
and doesn't actually do much covering. So this is probably my least favorite item out of the entire uh, line that I have tried. Uh, and then I'm gonna move on to the Matchstick in Amber, which is actually probably my second least favorite item because of the same consistency issues with me and blending it in. Now it is a fantastic contour shade for me, but I just have a lot of issues with blending it in. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply it straight from the bullet on this side, and then I will like use my fingers on this side. Actually, I'm gonna use, um, I used this brush to some success the other day. It's just actually a deluxe, like blending eyeshadow brush from Real Techniques, but I find that I can use it for contour. So definitely going in with the brush, you're not gonna get such like, such a pigmented amount that could then be hard to blend out. For me, this guy is just kind of hard to blend out. It also just might very well have to do with my skill set when it comes to blending out cream contours. I am a little bit better when it comes to blending out like powder contours, but when it comes to this, I think I just end up, when I blend it out, I make it muddy. And when I really try and go in and like really try and make it like buff it out, uh, I end up disrupting the foundation so much and end up lifting it up. Yeah, these just, unfortunately, the consistency, <laughs> the consistency of them doesn't really work very well for me, especially with the Fenty foundation. I, I can have made them work a little bit better with creamier foundations, but even then, uh, I just don't necessarily know if they're like the right type of product uh, for my skill set and like my user ease. But it'll be interesting if they come out with like a powder formula of this amber color. That would be great because I love a good powder contour. So if they did that, uh, I'd be all over it. And if they came out with like a dedicated concealer because this is just like a little bit too dry to use on my under eyes and um, I don't find that I'm able to make it uh, help cover my blemishes that well. Starstruck, on the other hand, is my favorite of the matchsticks. This is a really beautiful, sort of pink toned highlight. It does have like tiny specks of shimmer in it. Uh, if you really press it into the skin, it can become very like lit within, not too noticeable, but you really have to work it into the skin. Other than that, it can end up looking very blubbing, blubbing. <laughs> very blingy uh but even that is very beautiful it's just sort of a preference uh but i'm just gonna like sort of dab it onto the skin i don't like dragging with the matte sticks because as i have said probably a million times by now uh that that ends up lifting up the foundation on me and then i'm just gonna take my finger to press it into the skin put on a little bit of eyeshadow and of course in that process i uh, stabbed myself in the eye so hopefully my eye is not super red looking uh but moving on to trophy wife wife <laughs> trophy wife this to me is going to be an iconic piece of makeup and i know this is not super wearable uh, for my skin tone, but there's something so incredibly iconic, I know I've said that word like five times, uh, about this that I just sort of wanted it in my life. Now, I actually do love the way this looks uh, as a highlighter on me, um, but even more so, I love it as eyeshadow. And uh, I'd say for like several days in a row, I've been just like popping it as like a very, very inner, um, very, very intense inner corner eyelight. So I'm gonna go ahead, put it, put it on uh, the inner corner of my eye. Uh, right now, I just <laughs> spritzed this little brush and I'm dipping in just so it can get really intense and foiled. This dry can sort of just like go everywhere. If I was to take like a fluffy brush and rub it onto my skin, you will have it 
all over your body. It'll be on your jeans, it'll be on your shirt, it'll be everywhere. So I do prefer when I want it to be very isolated to wet it so it doesn't, uh, so it stays isolated. And just to give an idea of how it looks, I'm just gonna take a littlest, littlest bit and apply it as a highlighter and a kind of draping motion. The Universal Gloss Balm is definitely more on the sort of like slick, um, almost slippery side of glosses versus like say if you've tried like the Glossier one, which I feel is very, very sticky and stays put. It um, has a little bit of like a rosewood rose tone look to it. Giant, giant applicator. Like, like look at that. It's like the applicator is almost bigger than my actual lips. Uh, and I'm gonna put this guy on. Has a very like fruity, slightly vanilla-y scent. It definitely makes my lips look bigger than they actually are. Which is good, cause uh, you know, kinda got no lips. At least no upper lip. There it is. I look very, um, very glowy right now. And um, it doesn't really have a taste or anything, but yeah, it, it, it moves a lot. I think it layers really nicely over lipsticks. So I'm actually gonna blot this off and I'm gonna put on this Cranberry uh, YSL lipstick and I'm just going to dot a tiny bit on top of this matte lipstick. So be right, be right back. All right, so there is the lip with uh, a matte lipstick underneath and then uh, the gloss balm dotted on top there. But I'm gonna do a quick recap before I end this video. So starting out with the Pro Filter Primer, I love this. It really does like a nice perfecting, slightly pore filling thing on the face. I've tried it out with a multitude of foundations and it has gone well with all of those. I can't really speak if it has made anything last longer, but I wouldn't say that it has made anything uh, last less, but uh, it does make things look really nice and I love pairing it with a uh, sort of glowy foundation on top. So that goes really well. The foundation has been a very bumpy road for me. Something is up with this 120 where it just sort of separates and goes really weird on my face. Uh, it also is a lot thinner consistency than a lot of the other uh, darker shades that I have tried. I did get the samples of 120 and 140, both worked a little bit better. Um, and these also are, they're still quite runny compared to some of the darker shades, but um, still actually a slightly thicker than this one. So I'm not sure what's going on. And yes, I did, I did shake them um, before using them. So I'm not sure what's going on. This doesn't build very well on top of itself for me. I also find that I really have to work with it really fast because it dries down um, very quickly on my skin. And uh, I also feel like with this foundation, I can really only use powder products on top of it. Uh, if I use cream products, it tends to lift the foundation up. It does feel really lightweight and from far away, I think it looks gorgeous. But up close, I find that it does emphasize my texture, can easily sit on top of my pores and really doesn't sit very well in this area for me. Also, um, I did have quite a lot of hormonal breakouts last week and I found that I had a really hard time getting this foundation to cover those and it would just sort of like sit uh, sit on top of them and I couldn't really get it to blend in. Also, I found that this was only like a few hour wear time. Um, like if I had like a full 10 hour sort of day out doing stuff, it definitely wore away on my forehead, sort of lifted up on top of the skin and separated even more in this area. So it really is a foundation that I can only use for uh, a few hours. Uh, but because it does give that really beautiful sort of red carpet finish, it seems like a really nice sort of event style makeup. Um, but with that, not necessarily something I'm gonna be able to get the 
most use out of so I'm excited to see what other uh, foundations formulations that Fenty comes out with because the color match I got is amazing absolutely great even both of these actually 140 and 120 worked fantastic for me the match sticks unfortunately were a pass for me they were really hard for my ability to work into the skin linen I had a hard time getting it to cover my spots didn't really sit well underneath my eyes I could use it as like a matte highlight but only on creamier uh, bases that I had underneath it amber I just great color hopefully they come out with like a powder uh contour because i would totally use that unfortunately i just couldn't really get this to blend for me uh, but that also just might be my skill set i think starstruck is gorgeous it has this really beautiful pinky pearlescence that if you really press into the skin it can be an everyday highlight but you can easily build it up and be something crazy trophy wife which is sitting over there is definitely something when I want to do something more avant-garde I like doing definitely more editorial type stuff with my makeup here and there because I'm an actor and I don't have like regular type of jobs I can easily pull off more kind of crazy fashiony makeup in my day-to-day -day. so for me this is a piece that I love and I will be getting a lot of wear out of the gloss bomb unfortunately just because of my face structure and how I talk um, it moves around way too much uh, for uh, my sort of liking but it is a really beautiful color and it has a nice bit of shimmer Woo! okay uh, I think that entire video could have just been that recap. <laughs> um, so there you go. There is all of my thoughts on the Fenty Beauty items that I have tried. If you have tried anything, I'd love to know your experience down below. Let me know how some things worked for you. Um, and if some things didn't work for you, I really like uh, having the beauty conversation um, with somebody that isn't myself. I'm sitting alone in a room. All right, I hope you are having a great day and uh, subscribe um, and like the video. That would be great. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.